Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In the tutorial series on in silico drug discovery, now we have come to a very crucial stage because in this video, I am going to explain the concept of molecular docking. You know that molecular docking is a very important computational technique which is used to screen or filter chemical compounds based on their binding potential to a particular target protein. And this is a very preliminary test to screen the chemical compound. In other words, it's a computational test to see whether any chemical compound binds strongly with a target protein or not. And molecular docking also predicts the binding force of that chemical compound. So uh, we get two kinds of output or result from the molecular docking experiment. The first output is binding energy of the ligand or chemical compound and this binding energy is sometimes also expressed in terms of binding score. And the second is the binding force of that chemical compound, binding force or the conformation of the ligand molecule. So let's first discuss about the binding energy. So what is binding energy? Now you already know that in drug discovery, we search for the protein binder of a target protein. So we expect that when the ligand will be present in the vicinity of any target protein, it will spontaneously bind to the binding site of the target protein. That means the reaction will be spontaneous or exergonic. Okay, in terms of thermodynamics, the reaction will be exergonic. So, what is exergonic reaction? In thermodynamics, an exergonic reaction is a chemical reaction where the change in the free energy is negative or simply it's the kind of reaction uh, which is energetically favorable where something moves from higher energy states to lower energy states just like a downhill movement of water. Okay. And the equation which is used to check the spontaneity of a reaction. That means whether the reaction will be spontaneous or not. So to check that, uh, this equation can be used. The equation is delta G equals to delta H minus T delta L. And G means the Gibbs free energy or simply free energy. And delta means change in the free energy. Okay. H means the internal energy of the system. So in case of biomolecule, it is usually the energy stored in the bond or we may say the energy states of the molecule. T means temperature and S means randomness of the system. S means entropy or randomness of the system. So now when the ligand binds with protein molecule, the binding usually occurs through formation of different non-covalent bonds. The non-covalent bond like electrostatic interaction, van der Waals interaction, H bond and hydrophobic interaction. And this interaction occurs between the binding site residues of the protein and the ligand group. Okay, so you can see here these are the ligand groups, this ring structure, these are the ligand groups. And these are the active site residues like phenylalanine 177, aspartate 222. These are the residues which are present in the binding site of the protein molecule. And these active site residues form non covalent bond like hydrophobic interaction, electrostatic, or van der Waals with the group of the ligand or chemical compound. And these non-covalent interactions are themselves energetically favorable. And this interaction stabilizes the protein ligand complex. Therefore, after binding of the ligand, the energy level of the whole protein ligand complex become lower than the sum of the energy level of individual protein and ligand. For example, if the energy of a protein is suppose 100 and is of ligand, if the energy is 50, then after binding of the ligand to the protein, that means after formation of the complex, if the energy state of the complex is 130, 
then the change in the free energy will be minus 20 okay so more the delta g value will be negative more the chances that the ligand binding will occur spontaneously so based on this value we can rank different chemical compounds whose delta g value is more negative will be considered as more potent binder okay so i have tried to explain here in a very simplistic manner but for detail you can watch several other videos on spontaneous reaction or law of thermodynamics in the youtube okay so now i am moving to the next part that is the binding pose of the ligand so suppose uh, this is a chemical compound a ligand and for better understanding i have designed it like the shape of human body you see in the human body there are several joints like the knee joint elbow joint so several uh, joints are there okay and uh, these joints are flexible flexible region that's why we can attain different kind of posture like we can lie down we can sit walk and even exercise so in this image you can see a few of the possible postures okay and these postures are only possible due to the presence of the joints similarly an organic chemical compound usually contains the flexible region or rotatable bond and these are the uh, rotatable bond or the flexible region and the covalent bond can be compared with the uh, with a spring uh, which can be stretched or bent and rotated but the bonds in the ring structure are usually uh, rigid they are not uh, so flexible and similarly the double bonds are also uh, not very flexible but the single bonds are usually more flexible okay that's why the molecule can, can bend or attain different uh, force so here comes the most interesting part the molecular docking software can predict different possible poses of a chemical compound within the binding site of a protein or in other words it actually tests different poses or conformation of a chemical compound against the binding site residues and score the conformation based on their suitability or complementarity to the binding site okay so uh, however to get a good score a pose should qualify mainly in two aspects and the first aspect is degree of complementarity or contact with the binding site basically and energy state of the ligand so suppose this is a, a globular protein and its binding site is triangular in shape and these are two ligands one is triangular in shape and another is circular in shape okay so now you can see the second ligand fit better within the binding site and like lock and key okay because more surface area of this ligand is in contact with the surface of the binding site than the first ligand in case of first ligand only a limited area uh, is in contact with the protein active site but in case of second ligand you can see more surface area are in touch okay so more contact of ligand with the protein through formation of more non covalent bond is a key factor in determining the good pole because more non covalent interaction means more energetically favorable binding and second factor is the energy state of the ligand okay so imagine a man in three posture the lying in a bedroom sitting in a office room and standing in a crowded bus you see his postures are appropriate for three different situation okay in lying posture he is totally relaxed and he requires limited energy to maintain his posture similarly each chemical compound or biomolecule have diff have different energy state 
and they want to achieve the energy minimized state if the situation allows. When the man is standing, he requires more energy to maintain the posture, but he is unable to relax due to the surrounding environment. Similarly, within the binding site of a protein, the amino acid residues influence or determine the pores of the ligand. Even ligand have the influence on the binding site residues and vice versa. So we will discuss this in the next segment. However, the increase in the internal energy of the ligand will be accepted if the overall internal energy of the complex or system decreases. That is, if the net delta D value is negative, the reaction will be spontaneous. The ligand will bind with the protein molecule. So there is a balance between the binding energy and binding force, which finally determines the optimum force or the most possible force of the ligand. Finally, the force with the highest negative delta G value is always considered as the base force. You can see the, uh, this is a ligand molecule, same molecule, but uh, it has attained different force. And in first force, the delta G value is minus 7.1, in second force, minus 8.7, and in third force, minus 9.3. So this is the most favorable force because the delta G value is more negative in this case. Okay, so. This is about the uh, pores of the chemical compound. So uh, these are the uh, list of few common docking software which are commonly used for molecular docking. So uh, non-commercial software like Autodoc 4, Autodoc Vina, and PyRx. PyRx actually uses Autodoc Vina, but through PyRx you can uh, use Vina for batch mode screening. LayDoc is also there, IgM Doc. So these are the list of few uh, non-commercial commonly used docking software. Commercial docking software among commercial docking software like Glide, Gold, Molegro, Virtual Docker, and Molesoft from ICMs are also there. So in uh, next tutorial, I will explain uh, how to perform molecular docking. But in this video, I try to explain what is the principles of molecular docking, what are the key factors. Or uh, uh, based on which the molecular docking software uh, works. Okay, so uh, that's all for today's tutorial. In next tutorial, uh, I will try to explain how to perform molecular docking using different docking software like Autodoc 4 or Vina. So uh, uh, in subsequent video, I will explain about the molecular docking, how to perform molecular docking. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.